Hello Buckets, I'm Miniba, and today I shall tell you the secrets of becoming a master diver. In this video, I shall go over topics such as bubbling analysis, shadow size, fast critter techniques, and spawning pool optimization. And now, the timestamps. First, let me give you some introduction to deep sea fishing for those of you that have just started. For people that already know the basics, feel free to skip to the next section. So, deep sea fishing is an update that came to Adam Crossing on July 3rd. And this was the second game it was present, the first being New Leaf, in which diving was actually a lot harder. If you wish to go diving, you will have to first buy a wetsuit from Nook's Craney. Once you have that, wear it and remove any tools you are equipping because you cannot go into the ocean with a tool equipped. You can also do a flip off a rock or a dog by running it and pressing A. Pretty cool, right? Anyways, deep sea fishing is different from regular fishing in a way that it doesn't need a fishing rod, uh, there's no fake bites, you don't really have twitch, and failure is very forgiving, as it doesn't despawn unless you go off the screen for too long. So when a deep sea creature is present on a surface, you will see some bubbles rising from below. Simply press Y to dive down and you will see a circular shadow, and that is your sea critter. All you gotta do is swim up to it, and as soon as you make contact, your villager will automatically grab it and catch it. Once you have caught them however, you can donate them to bladders the very same way, in which they will share their tanks with already existing fish, such as the Giga's giant clam in the Napoleon fish or the coral reef tank. I have also heard a rumor about a golden wetsuit that you can get if you catch all the deep sea. That is false, unfortunately, at least as of July 11th. Could it be a new thing in the future? Perhaps, but for now, no. So for deep sea creatures, there are 3 sizes and 4 speeds. While there are guys that mention 6 speeds and 5 sizes, I have actually never seen that distinction, at least to the point of regular fishing. Most of the guys I've seen have only shown 3 sizes and 4 speeds, and that's also the same stats as newly. So that is going to be what I'm going with. Anyways, the 3 sizes are small, medium, and large. For example, the sea slug is small, the oyster is medium, and the gigas giant clam is large. For the speeds, the four are stationary, slow, medium, and fast. So the sea anemone, or the sea bass of deep sea fishing, is stationary. The sea slug again is slow. The tiger prawn is medium. And again, the gigas giant clam is fast. Now, the only speed you actually have to pay attention to is fast. This is because the player moves faster than the previous three speeds. Stationary, slow, medium, you can just swim up to it, spam A, you can catch it just like that. There is no difficulty. But for the fast creatures, they move as fast if not faster than your villager, so you will actually have to use certain methods to catch them. This means you can't just swim after it, uh, they will continue to escape your grip. For the techniques on catching them, feel free to skip to section 4. So how does knowing the size and the speed help you catch critters? For the most part, it doesn't really help you in the catch itself, but it does save time so you don't end up diving down and catching a bunch of common creatures and having to sell them off because your inventory is full. Just about every rare creature has a fast speed, and the majority of them are large as well. You can just skip everything that does not fit those specifications. If any given moment, the shadow or even the bubbles move away from you faster or as fast as you are swimming at max speed, then it is likely a rare creature. However, if you're able to close the gap relatively quickly, then it is likely they are not a rare creature. You don't really have to dive down to check the speed, although it is easier when you're just starting. When you close in on a critter, it'll actually kick up sand clouds, and the bubbles will also move along too. So again, let's say you're going for the Gigas Giant Clam. We know that it's a large shadow size of 3, and a fast speed of 3, 0 being stationary. Skipping all the small and mediums can save you time, and let's say an octopus spawns, which is also a large size shadow, you can see that it moves slower than you. So again, you can skip on it and continue on. So the next part is bubbling analysis. The bubbling frequency seems to be based on three factors, shadow size, speed, and also the type of gritter. For example, creatures such as the kelp or the sea anemone not only have a high bubbling rate, but the bubbles seem to shoot straight up with very little variations on side to side movement. Another thing I noticed is that large fast creatures seems to have their own pattern of movement, with it being very fast and very irregular with lots of side to side variation. I have thought speed will actually affect the other sizes as well, but when I found the sea pig, it had the same bubbling consistency as the sea slug. Anyways, let's compare side by side. The sea anemone on the left and the gigas giant clam on the right both have large shadows, the one on the right has a much more obvious side to side pattern, while on the left, 
it's basically going straight up. If you see bubbles like this, it means it is a critter with a large size and is probably the kelp or the sea anemone. Combining section 2 and section 3 allows us to identify something by just looking at it without even having diving down. If we're hunting for the sea pig, which has a small shadow and a slow bubbling rate, anything with a medium or a fast bubbling rate will not be the sea pig and can be skipped. This is assuming you're only hunting for the sea pig. This doesn't really accomplish anything but to save time. You're not going to despawn rare creatures just by catching the common ones. If you're not sure about something, just catch it. It's better safe than sorry and it doesn't really hurt you. Arguably the most difficult portion of deep sea fishing is catching a creature with a speed of 3. Unlike speed 0 to 2, speed 3 moves just as fast, if not faster, than your villager. So aimlessly chasing them will often be met with failure until you get lucky with some of the movement RNG. To combat this, I have found 3 methods to systematically catch, chase, and corner these deep sea creatures. The first one, and the easiest but longest method, is the corner method. As the name suggests, the goal of the method is to chase the fast creatures into the corner of the map. The movement mechanics of these creatures aren't really that complex, but they can be a nightmare to catch in the open ocean. However, the moment you corner them, they basically freeze, unable to decide where to move. They're a sitting duck for an easy catch. However, it does have a big disadvantage. If your creature spawns in the middle of the map, then you might have to swim for a few minutes just to push it into the corner. But this is the most guaranteed and the easiest to perform method. The second method, and arguably the hardest one, is the wall method. Instead of chasing the creature to a corner, you're chasing them to one of the walls. Since the wall will be closed no matter where the critter spawns, you will never have to swim for more than 20 seconds at max to push them into the wall. However, it is far more difficult to execute. You first want to start by chasing the critter into the wall on the surface, since you can't really dive down that long without surfacing debris. As soon as you chase the creature into the wall, dive down and push it further in. Because the wall doesn't allow them to move any closer, the creature will swim towards you, allowing for an easy catch. Now keep in mind the angle of the approach actually matters. If you actually chase the creature diagonally, it's going to go diagonally like the angle of incidence. So anything other than a perpendicular chase is going to make it so you have to react to where the creature is going to be. And oftentimes you won't be fast enough and the creature will just dart away, forcing you to redo the entire process. I myself can use this method consistently, but for the more daring fishers, feel free to give it a try. The third, and in my opinion, the best method is the slow dive method. This is because the success has to do with timing, and the window of success is significantly larger than the wall method. Not only that, you can perform this method in the open ocean, so you don't gotta chase it anywhere. So when you find a fast creature, swim to about this far, any closer and it'll start running away. After that, stop and swim slowly towards it. Basically just swim without pressing or holding A. Once you see the sand cloud from the creature, which signals that it's become run away, count about 3 seconds or 3 swim strokes from your villager, and then dive down. Immediately spam A and swim as fast as you can towards the critter. If you timed it right, the creature will actually move at a same slower speed, allowing you to catch up and catch it. Using this method, I was able to consistently catch 5 or 6 without failing once. Even though this method is easier than the wall method, it does take a couple tries to get the timing right. But thankfully, failing the approach doesn't cause the critter to despawn, so you're able to practice as many times as you want on the same creature. One final note is that you don't really have to stick with the same method. If you master all three methods, you can actually switch back and forth depending on where the creature has spawned. If the fast critter spawns right beside a corner, there will be really no point doing the slow method and you can just chase straight up to it and catch it easily. The same way if the critter has spawned close to a wall, you can do the same. But if the creature spawns in open ocean, then a slow dive method will be to go to. Keep in mind that you don't have to force yourself to use one method or the other. Some people might find one method easy and another hard, and another person might find them in a reverse. Just try all the methods and just stick to what you're comfortable with, with the highest chances of success. The next part is something that I've talked about many times in the past, but it's something that is still not widespread. Because apparently nobody bothers putting this in their own critter guides, is spawning pole optimization. It's basically choosing a specific time, place, and environment that have the least number of creatures spawning, including the one you're hunting, of course. This raises the chance of whatever rare creature you're trying to get. So let's look at a Gigas Giant Clam again. In my Critter Guide video, I recommended 9am to 4pm in May for the north and in November for the south. These recommended times are not the critter availability, but instead the time and month where they have the highest chance of spawning. 
So, how did I find this time frame? Let's start with the spawning time in months of the Gigas Giant Clam, which is all day from May to September. From that, I can start narrowing the spawning pool. So step 1, take out all the critters that do not spawn in those corresponding months, May to September. And step 2, figure out which of these 5 months have the least a number of critters spawning. To do that, I just take a look at my Google document with all the spawn times, and I start counting each of the monthly creatures one by one. Once I find a month, we can move on to step 3. Remove the creatures that can be avoided by fishing in certain times, such as the Chamber Nautilus which can be found from 4pm to 9am. So once you have narrowed down the month at a time interval, use all the techniques from the previous sections to make the actual hunt far easier and efficient. Now another thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to scare away any creatures in deep sea fishing. As soon as you swim off the screen, creatures that have already spawned will despawn after a while. This means you can easily circle around your island and not have to worry about the same sea anemone that you haven't catch up here and over and over. So that's the end of the video. I hope it helped. These larger guide videos do take a lot of time and effort, so I'll be so grateful if you guys can subscribe. Anyways, a huge thanks to my members, Scar Daddy, Boop, and Selena Kyle. Stay cool. Like, comment, and hit the bell for a chance to drink a potato. Peace, your shits.